Welcome back everyone, Dustin here again, Average Guy Hi-Fi with another long overdue video for you guys. So this is actually from a speaker manufacturer that I've always, always been interested in and I never had the opportunity. I feel like around here in the Seattle area, whenever Anthony Gallo speakers pop up, like a lot of, there's a lot of activity on them. I missed out on a, a really nice pair of kind of my dream speakers about two years ago and I'm still kicking myself for that one. But what we have right here is kind of like the the smallest version of the Anthony Gallo lineup. Well, they make a couple even that are a little bit smaller, but this right here is the Nucleus. So I'll kind of show you a close up. Obviously this looks very similar to the Orb audio speakers or do the Orb audio speakers look very similar to the Anthony Gallo Nucleus speakers? Um, they are just a kind of a, just one way, basically one way speaker. So a lot of speakers out there, you'll see that they have tweeters, sometimes they have mids and then they have a woofer, but this one kind of a full range speaker that they have in there. Um, the specs on this are, is they, they claim that it goes down to about 120 Hertz from what I can find. Again, when I'm pulling this, this information, like these speakers have been out a while. So trying to find accurate information is a little bit more difficult. So if you guys have these or know the spec sheet, things like that, let me know if I got something wrong and I'll update it in the description. I really do spend a lot of time trying to get the descriptions accurate and as much information there as possible, especially when it comes to my thoughts on these type of speakers. So be sure to check that out because that's where a lot of the time goes under these videos. Um, again, they claim it goes down to about 100 hertz, probably something more like um, 150 hertz if I you know, had to guess. They are definitely designed to be augmented with a subwoofer or two, but we'll get into that a little bit later. 100 watt peak handling abilities. They come with a little cover, these right here. I'll show you the ones over there in action, um, but they have like a little cover. Usually it has like a cloth over the top like this one, but the center channel just was missing the cloth. So um, not the end of the world for me, but uh, still in good shape the cabinets and everything like that are nice and shiny not too many too much damage uh the impedance is eight ohms but have with like five uh when they put them on the bench test things like that they have looks like they have uh, impedance dips down to about five ohms um, which is pretty standard a lot of speakers will fluctuate a little bit when it comes to the impedance um 89 db desensitivity and they are about four inches in diameter and again they're just spheres so i kind of brought this over here too to kind of show you a little close up here with the cloth on it and then also this set, so it came with five of these, these um, Nucleus speakers, and it, uh, four of them actually are on the stand. So these are actually the Anthony Gallo um, matching speaker stands to these. So they have like a really nice modern look to them uh, if you're kind of into that type of thing. They weigh about a, uh, 1.75 pounds each with the stands actually are really heavy. I would say the stands are probably 10 pounds each, maybe a little bit more. Um, the total MSRP um, for the five speakers in the stands, the stands are about $200 a piece from what I could tell, and the speakers are about $300 a piece. So the total MSRP um, for the five speakers and the four stands came somewhere around the $2,300 range, but it also came with this unusual guy here. This is actually an Anthony Gallo um, subwoofer, So, but it's a two-piece design, which is really kind of unusual. This right here is the amplifier of the sub. So kind of show you a close up there because nobody's showing this type of older stuff. Kind of see how the back is. And then um, the second part of the sub is the actual woofer itself. So right there. And it just connects with this like kind of looks like a guitar guitar amp type plug that plugs into the, the top and the bottom to connect them. Unfortunately, the subwoofer will not be included in this review. I knew going into buying this set that it was uh, the subwoofer wasn't functional. One of the inputs got pushed in a little bit too far. So if you're handy, whoever ends up with this set um, then uh, you probably fix this thing because it powers on and everything. Um, but with the subwoofer, the subwoofer had a range right around the $500, $600 range. So the total MSRP for the five speakers, the four stands, and the subwoofer is about $2,800. Anthony Gallo is one of those brands. It's kind of a, they make really expensive speakers, uh, but a lot of times, really good sounding speakers too. I've heard a couple of their larger pairs and they really do sound good, but they more focus towards the minimalist styling um, more modern, they, they blend beautiful into modern rooms, things like that. So $2,800 is a lot of money uh, for this setup, especially considering their size. But um, I think that that's just kind of what Anthony Gallo focuses on. They want high quality sounding speakers that kind of blend into your room as much as possible. So um, I ended up grabbing these speakers on OfferUp and I ended up paying $400 for the set with the broken subwoofer. So, and again, somebody out there might be, might be able to fix it. So we'll just kind of show you these. I'm getting copyrights. Uh, all my videos get struck down copyright because I'm showing you guys these speakers playing. So I'm gonna have to come up with some type of idea here um, to kind of get around that. 
So if you guys have any ideas, just go ahead and let me know. Uh, it's a little bit frustrating, but I haven't monetized this thing anyway. I've been just kind of doing it as a hobby, um, just trying to show off speaker brands that nobody out there is really following along with or nobody is reviewing. So that's kind of the point. But we'll go over there. I got them all level matched and everything. Got my lexicon all hooked up. Um, ran the room correction, Dirac, the whole thing. So they're nice and dialed in as much as they can be. Um, we'll show you the movie Tron playing, and then I'll come back over here and I'll give you guys the average guy hi-fi impressions of the set. All right, everyone, we got the uh, we got the Anthony Gallo speakers all hooked up again. This is a, just a five-speaker package. I'll kind of walk around and show you them. Um, but as you can see, uh, the real benefits for speakers like this and why I kind of like showing you them in the room um, is that they basically make your place look bigger if you live in a smaller unit like me, like around 600 square feet. I have those big uh, Klipsch Ultra 2s, 650 or KL650 THXs, and they really have a, a very large presence in the room. Like you walk in and it's like you see speakers. See, these are kind of designed to be more of the type of speaker that blends in with a little bit, little bit smaller places. So obviously that's the whole design of these. They're not going to knock your your uh, socks off when it comes to home theater performance or anything like that but uh, they definitely do a good job for their size all things considered um, and I am going to be running them in this demo with a subwoofer playing I usually don't um, but I got a Velodyne DD uh, 12 over there in the corner that I'll be that I'll be using with the demo. They just don't sound um, They just don't have enough low end to sound good uh, Playing by themselves with no subwoofer, but that's how they're intended So I'm just gonna play them that way. I have the subwoofer turned down as well, too So hopefully it doesn't distort the mic, but here we go. Here's a little demo with Tron uh, legacy one of my favorite go-to's All right, I hope you guys enjoyed that sound demo. Again, like Gene over at Audioholics always says, you got to get out there and listen to them yourself. But I just felt like I needed to kind of at least try to show you guys um, how they look in the rooms whenever I'm doing speakers and trying to let you hear how they sound. But obviously the ultimate test is getting out there and letting your ears decide what sounds good to you because sound is very subjective. And we also have pretty short sound memory, which is something I don't hear a lot of people on the forums talking about. Like when people refer to speakers that they heard 10 years ago, how they hear them now compared to then could be quite different, especially since our ears are constantly changing and also our brain doesn't seem to retain um, sounds really down to the details of things. So it's always, you know, when you're out there shopping, again, the point of this channel is try to help you guys save money, um, get out there and you're buying used gear, definitely try to listen to this stuff if at all possible. I know with COVID and everything like that, people sometimes don't want to meet, don't want you to come in their house or you're meeting in parking lots. but really um i highly recommend that you guys uh get out there and listen to them i just been buying used gear for so long that i kind of take the ups and downs i've been sold some speakers that were broken or ones that didn't sound good um things like that and then i'll just sell them for a loss or whatever the situation is but ideally get out there and listen to stuff all right so now we're on to the average guy hi-fi scoring section of the video this is actually my favorite part where i give you guys just my thoughts i've been living with these speakers for I've owned them for a long time now, but I've um, been listening to them for about the past couple weeks. Um, so, you know, like we, the average guy hi-fi score really comes off of um, five different categories, each category up to 10 points. So we go off of quality, we go off of sound, we go off the MSRP pricing, we go off the aesthetics, then we go off my price paid, then I give you guys a score. So we'll just jump right into it from a quality perspective. 
really high quality little speakers. They're nice and dense, heavy. That stainless cabinet is definitely well built. The binding posts are solidly on there. The speaker stands are super high quality. Um, and I, as I kind of showed you over there, my banana, the 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 post that the speaker wire that came with them was running up them. I just go ahead and left left that in there because I didn't want to fish all that out and have the new purchaser have to go ahead and try to get them snaked back through that pipe again. And my speaker wire was too big anyway. But they will accommodate banana plugs, which is a nice touch as well too. Anthony Gallo is kind of known for high quality speakers, um, the manufacturing process, uh, the quality of the the cabinets, the woofers, the whole thing. So eight and a half out of ten when it comes to quality. When it comes to sound, I gave them a seven out of ten. They have a, a good presence. As long as you're in a smaller room, they really start kind of falling apart if you try to turn them up too loud. Um, you can tell that they're starting to strain a little bit, and that's a bad thing when it comes to speakers because when they're straining, they're about ready to something's going to go wrong. So um, for the brief times when it got around 100 dB, something like around that range, you can tell that these just aren't up to the – up to the. I mean, trying to go from those – Klipsch KL650 THXs to Anthony Gallo nuclear, nuclear speakers is definitely not a fair comparison. And I'm guessing that people that are buying these are putting them in bedrooms. They'll definitely fill the bedroom with plenty of sound. Small living rooms, these would be great um, because of the visual impact and things like that. But they really, really need a subwoofer or two. Um, with the, they say 100 hertz is like the, is about as far down as they go. I don't think they really go down that far either. So you're gonna have to really ask more of your sub. So. Um, and then when you start asking too much of your sub to kind of cover too much of the frequency range, then they become localized, meaning that when you're in the room, a bass is supposed to be omnidirectional and come from all over and you and you have it set up correctly, you're not supposed to be able to tell where it's at. But when you have the sub playing frequencies that it's generally not supposed to be playing, you can tell where the subwoofer is at. So if you're listening to a movie, you hear bass, you can tell it's coming from the right corner or the left corner or wherever the subwoofer is at. So I would say like maybe a couple pair of uh, pair of small subwoofers would probably do a really good job in most kind of medium small size room at energizing it and then also making it uh, taking some of the strain off the speakers themselves. Seven out of ten, they have a nice um, you know they projected the sound out uh, quite a bit, a pretty good sound stage considering their size and everything like that. Um, but I would say that people are buying these are are aware that they're not going to be world beaters when it comes to volume or kind of just just overall excellent high-end home theater type quality speakers. These are just for a little bit different type of consumer. I would definitely recommend these over the Bose um, system, which costs around the same amount of money anyway. So seven out of 10 when it comes to sound. Um, MSRP, I gave them a six and a half. There's no way to kind of sugarcoat it. You know, $2,300 for five little speakers that size and four stands is a lot of money. Um, but again, that's not the type of the consumers that are looking at this stuff high-end I'm in, I'm in real estate so I'm in uh, pretty nice um, high-end units with their modern and that type of stuff and these would be that type of consumer people that don't take it just die hard seriously or they'd make really good surrounds um, you know light duty surrounds maybe like the seven the point two out of a seven um, point one system or even at most modules they make you can even drop them they have a little screw hole in the back so you can just drop it down so it's just a ball hanging above for Atmos. they would be perfect for that I would say um, so, but it, they are expensive, uh, six, six and a half out of 10 when it comes to the MSRP, just because off of a, um, people that are watching these type of videos are more into like the sound, I would say than the aesthetics. This is kind of a, a little bit of a trade-off, obviously, um, six and a half there. Uh, when it comes to the aesthetics, I gave an eight, you know, it's a good score, but it's still, they're just, I'm, they're even too small for me. It's i uh, I'm a, a home theater guy. I'm, I'm like a gearhead. I like the seeing the speakers, uh, things like that. So I gave them an eight out of 10. I could have probably bumped that up a little bit, maybe to a nine, just because they do exactly what they're supposed to do. Like I mentioned over there, they putting speakers like this into your room will actually make your room look a little bit bigger if you're in a smaller place. And it's just the visual impact is much less. And they got those beautiful curved stands. Um, it looks like something from War of the Worlds, if you ask me, but I, they do look nice. Um, the stainless kind of blends with a lot of modern interiors, things like that. But um, I do like a little bit more presence with my speakers. So eight out of 10 when it comes to the aesthetics. My price paid, eight and a half out of 10. You guys know the deals I've gotten. Um, I'm gonna sell these for exactly what I paid for them, $400 for the five speakers and the four stands. Somebody's gonna get a killer deal. I'll even throw in that subwoofer if they can get that thing to work. Um, but I have had better deals. Uh, Anthony Gallo, uh, again, around here, it has a pretty good a name and people are aware of it. So when it pops up, it usually sells pretty quickly. 
Um, but I've also had some pretty remarkable deals out there. So not the best score either. So eight and a half when it comes out of um, quality, seven when it comes out of sound, um, six and a half when it comes to the MSRP, eight when it comes to the aesthetics, eight and a half when it comes to my price paid. That is a 77% uh, percent average guy hi-fi score. Um, you know, we kind of covered a lot of the stuff. I'm trying to keep these videos a little bit shorter, but as you guys can see around me, I'm starting to get into a little bit of a, another nasty habit of mine. Uh, it's taking a little pressure pressure off of the home theater stuff, but I'm starting to get into statues a little bit. I'm trying to pre-buy statues that I really like um, and then have them available whenever I get a chance to build a home theater. So that's what you guys can see in the background because I know you're going to ask me. But Anyway, I hope you guys are having a wonderful new year. I will start increasing the volume. I got to do that monolith um, five channel amplifier that I've been using for quite a while now, and I still have to review some Kef speakers, some of their little ones. Um, so there's some stuff in the pipeline, and I'm trying to, um, there's a couple deals actually that I'm gonna go try to grab this weekend. So hopefully I got some cool videos coming up for you guys. Again, my name is Dustin. The name of the channel is Average Guy Hi-Fi. If you have friends out there that are looking to save money, just get into the hobby, that's kind of what this vibe is about. Um, send them my direction, I can answer questions, things like that along the way. Thank you very much for stopping by.